So hi again. And now it's the second half. Let's talk about uh, reinventing physical toys using the Gauss RFID kit. It is an interactive RFID kit supporting precise and responsive 3D motion tracking. So actually, we're familiar with RFID and R because RFID tags are passive, reliable, and scalable. They are massively used as information containers. Recently, uh, game companies combine figurines with RFID tags, such as Lego Dimension and Nintendo Amiibo. Uh, they use figurine to store game information. But the tagged figurine only provide ID. They are not used for game control. So why not just use the tag figuring as tangible controller? It would be fun and intuitive, isn't it? Perhaps the reason is RFID tag only provide limited input capabilities. Serverworks enable RFID as controller using machine learning techniques. Incorporating with electronics, such as switch and knobs, or using specific uh, physical design. However, they do not turn RFID tags into a precise and responsive tangible controller in higher degree of freedom. On the other hand, we just learned that Gaussian support uh, precise and responsive 3D tangible sensing and does not require extra training effort. So our idea is fairly simple. We combine Gauss Sense and a RFID reader, and also we combine a magnetic unit and an RFID tag. Then the combination takes the advantage of both technologies. To realize this, these two sensors need to be synchronized by a microcontroller and separated in a few millimeters to avoid interferences. Also, a physical constraint is applied on the top of uh, the sensor to keep the tag in the sensing range while moving. Putting everything together and just work. Um, the combined sensor stably track the ID, orientation, and 3D position of the tag within at least five millimeter of a height with no training efforts required. This is an extremely simple technique providing low threshold of use. So we expect developers to use it as a toolkit. A useful toolkit should provide high level of abstraction. So on hardware design, the physical design of reader allows users to easily reduce the degree of freedom by adding physical caps on the top, such as the slider cap and holder cap, which allows only for rotation. Also, plug and play interfaces are provided to users for connecting additional sensors or actuators to the bottom of the device. Therefore, the reader can sense additional interactions or feed physical movement back to the tokens and the users. All the applications can be easily developed using Arduino and processing based on the Gauss Sense SDK, which is freely available on that website. To test whether uh, this tool is useful for developers or not, we conduct a two-day workshop, a toy hacking workshop. 31 participants from engineering and design backgrounds were separated into six groups. The topic of brainstorming was set to playing old toys in new ways. To reinvent toys, they made prototype using the toolkit and gave presentation and interactive demo in the second day. After the workshop, we collaborate with at least one member of each group and publish the results for documentation. As a result, six physical toys were reinvented. One group reinvented 10 gram as a mean for uh, reading digital books. By moving and rotating the different physical 10 gram pieces, player can assemble the virtual model to unveil the hidden character, and then they can continue reading the next story. One group redesigned Chinese chess in rich appearances, so they became commanders. So by playing a physical chess on the platform, 
Players can take the action of multiple same class token at the same time, which they cannot do in the real world. One group reinvented fishing rod by placing the reader and the tags on the reel. Notably, they also added a servo motor pulling in the string. In this way, the fishing rod becomes the shape-changing display when the ship is unhooked, when the fish is unhooked. <laughs> then uh, the happy feedback inform users the progress. One group reinvented Tetris game by making the Tetris blocks graspable and put a servo motor under the reader. In the game, the two players have to compete the token for the next move. Sometimes the block in need is just in the opponent's hand, so a user has to wait until it's available in use and then grasp it to manipulate the virtual one. Okay, so now uh, the player is qualified to attack the opponent, so he can use the black block to disable the opponent's input by making the platform shaking. One group reinvented train tracking with physical tokens. An actuator is placed under the reader. Then they can feel the speed of train through the haptic sensation and then the user can engage visual experiences on the display. The last group reinvented table football game. Each team used uh, two readers with four tags mapping to the display content and each reader are applied with a slider cap. So players can play the game using both hands, get the handles and stamp it on the reader to score. Notably, players can even play this game in a different room. Overall, the workshop participants failed the toolkit easy to use easily configurable and useful in designing tangible interactions with rich form and function. But the results were affected by two major limitations. First, the high frequency RFID can only read one tag at a time, so they need multiple readers to, to read multiple tags at the same time. Second, unlike Gauss bits, RFID could not be recognized behind an LCD, so causing the indirect mapping of token operations. Using portable projectors as visual display can be a possible solution. Conclusion, a combination of an RFID with magnetic tangibles effectively support applications that involve many tangible objects. And the result of the workshop showed the usability and usefulness of this toolkit. Well, actually, this is only partial result. The toolkit has been applied to several workshops and the result turned out to be very positive because people enjoy making interactive things with rich form and function. So here's a question for you. If you have this toolkit, what will you invent? No matter, yeah, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's the most important part. <laughs> no matter what your answer is, this time we are ready to respond to your answer we present the new Gauss RFID module, the Gauss RFID Cardboard, and also the Arduino compatible Gauss Sense Shield. This is the most affordable version, and I have one in my hand, so later you can come over to take a look. And most important, it is available from today, and you can order it from the website and have it in just a few days after you're back home. Okay, so please show your creativity, okay? Thank you. We are basically at time, but we could probably uh, squeeze in one question if anybody has one. Hello. I mean, Hello. Cool project, but uh, you know the, all the applications that you showed, the, the actual interface of a chess is better, etc. It's like a smartphone at the end of the day. But I can see that being really useful for CAD softwares and stuff like that. Like mm. uh, you know, I want a cube. I can you know rotate, translate, do all this kind of stuff. Are you thinking of exploring uh, this idea in, in this direction for like you know making stuff? 
Okay, so uh, actually we're providing toolkits for uh, developers for making. Yeah, because in, in a traditional way, uh, people may use a camera or another sensor to try uh, how to make this kind of interactive things. And I, we believe that this is just the first step. And uh, people can try to build a form, give the form, and uh, try to give function through the form. And, and then they can try to uh, realize some real, real world applications. And this is just a showcase. And, and we hope that people can apply it to different ways. And by the way, by the way, if you are going to try this or want to play the Pikachu <laughs> volleyball, we have one, and then you can come by it. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>